the last aspect of phase four implementation is managing internal controls. Internal controls are mechanisms to incentivize the proper use of resources on your project and disincentivize expending resources unnecessarily. An example of an internal control may be the barcode on my laptop. If I know my computer is being tracked by my organization through the barcodes, I'll be extra careful to make sure that it's not lost. Likewise, if my organization is using vehicle logs to track the gas and also the mileage of the vehicles, I may be more judicious on the usage of that vehicle for only business purposes. Because internal controls help us better manage our resources and protect our resources from misuse, it promotes the efficiency and effectiveness of our operations. Also, because I'm not using funds unnecessarily, it increases the reliability that I'll achieve my project outcomes. It also may promote the compliance with local laws and regulations. In addition, it'll protect those resources in my organization, both tangible, like the computer or vehicles, but also intangible, like the information and emails that I send. Lastly, it reduces the risk of fraud and corruption that my project may experience. Internal controls need to be managed through the entire supply chain of my project. That includes procurement management, logistics management, and asset management. It will also include information management as an increasing part of all of our projects. The first step in the supply chain management is procurement management, which is buying or procuring the materials or resources for my project. If it's something I've never done before, or a high dollar amount, I might have to go through a strict protocol of identifying providers, selection, negotiation, and award. However, if it's something that is only based on cost, I just need to get estimates. These are things like highlighters or office supplies that I can call around to a few different office supply stores and just get estimates. The next phase is logistics management. This is handling your fleets or your cars or materials transport, having the right protocols, having the right procedures, and having the right people involved in every step of moving your materials is important to ensure that they arrive safely and intact. Next is asset management, which is keeping things safe once you have them. So first you have to decide on what is an asset. You may not consider a pen to be an asset because it's not worth you tracking. However, things like laptops and vehicles are assets. Once you identify those assets, you need to label them, store them, and protect them accordingly. Also, at the end of your project, you should have protocols to dispose of it properly, and this may be dictated by your funder. Last is information management. Our work is increasingly becoming more and more about information and knowledge. How are you protecting your information? How are you making sure the right people see the right things at the right time? And then once the project is over, how is that information archived? These are all important aspects of good internal controls.